Welcome to Global Electronic Services Servo Motor Repair Process video. We are the industry's leader in industrial electronic, motor, hydraulic, and pneumatic repair. We want to be your number one source for all your industrial equipment needs. We are very excited to have you with us inside our motor repair shop. In the coming minutes, we are going to walk through the entire process of a full servo motor repair, including the initial evaluation, where a visual inspection, a surge comparison test, insulation resistance test, phase balance test, KE test, and count test using Mitchell Electronics TI-5000 will be performed. We will then continue through disassembly, cleaning using a alkaline wash process, bearings change, retest after repairs performed, RPM test, and encoder alignment using Mitchell Electronics TI-3000 and a complete 100% full load test. We'll finish up with a completely rebuilt like new motor. There's a lot to see, so let's get started. Once your servo motor arrives and has been received into our database, an evaluation by one of our motor technicians is performed before the servo motor repair is quoted. Here, the technician is performing a visual inspection, first verifying the model number, serial number, and GES number, our internal unique barcode number given by our system at the time it is received. Now that these are verified, the tech is visually inspecting the servo motor shaft, keyway, front end bell, back end bell, terminal box, feedback connector, brake connector, and three phase AC connector. The next step is for the technician to perform a surge comparison test or short test. He is using a surge tester to verify whether or not the stator will need a rewind. First connecting the ground to the motor and then connecting three leads to each phase of the motor. The surge test checks the strength of insulation and for any shorts, turn to turn, layer to layer, or phase to phase. As you can see on the screen of the surge tester, as the high voltage is applied, the readout from phase one to phase two is perfect phase two to phase three is perfect, and phase three to phase one is also perfect. This motor does not need a rewind. However, if it did, we do have the capabilities right here in this facility to do a full rewind, even on servo motors. Now, an insulation test, commonly known as a MEGAR test, using an insulation multimeter is being performed. We first connect one lead to ground, and check through each phase to ensure that the windings are not grounded or that the insulation is not broken down. Phase 1, 2.2. Phase 2, 2.2. Phase 3, 2.2. All phases read 2.2 on the meter, which is excellent. A winding resistance phase balance test using a true RMS meter is now being done to check and make sure that the windings are balanced. In between the phases, phase one to two, phase two to three, phase three to one. We'll also get a reading on the coil for the 24 volt brake. Looks good as well. Now, we put power on the brake and engage it by spinning the shaft to verify proper functionality. And it does. The technician is now moving to the KE testing station. The KE test tests the condition of the magnets inside the motor. If the magnets are good, there won't be any problems with the torque. If the magnets are weak or broken, then torque is lost. The technician will hook the motor to the KE test stand. He will couple the servo motor to an AC motor that is run by an adjustable speed AC motor control. He secures the motor in place and will run the motor. Using a tachometer, he is checking to see if the RPMs are at factory specifications. Using an oscilloscope, the tech now verifies the signals coming out from the servo motor on each phase to check for abnormalities. 
no abnormalities as you can see on the oscilloscope screen means that the magnets are in excellent condition. Let's head over to our final stage of the servo motor evaluation to the Mitchell Electronics TI-5000. The TI-5000 is part of our Mitchell Electronics system that allows us to test feedback devices on the servo motor. The most common problem that occurs in a servo motor is within the feedback device. We have hundreds of cables in stock and the software to test almost every type of servo motor regardless of manufacturer. If we don't stock the cable, we have the ability to make a cable to test your servo motor. There are three main types of feedback devices, encoders, resolvers, and tachometers. The most common is an encoder, which is a digital device that accounts for the number of rotations and positions the shaft. The encoder has a fragile glass reticle in its center and a circuit board with solid state devices on it. The next type of feedback is the resolver. It is an analog device that is used for positioning and monitoring. The last type is a tachometer, which is used for speed. Now we need to select the feedback in our Mitchell software. Our motor here has an encoder. Next, we need to select an encoder manufacturer such as Finick, Heidenhain, Indramat, Mitsubishi. This particular encoder is a Stegman. Now we choose our manufacturer type. This one is an SRM. And we select our motor manufacturer. This one is an Allen Bradley MPF. Then we will verify encoder status for receiving data, any internal errors, error types, and the ID of the encoder. Now we can proceed to the count test. To do this, we manually turn the shaft. First count, good. Second count, error. Third count, good. Fourth count, good. As you can see, the encoder has failed the count test in the second revolution. This motor will need to have the encoder repaired. Since we also repair industrial electronics here in the shop just down the hall, we can get the encoder repaired right now so it won't delay us. We can now finish up our evaluation, quote this motor, and send a sales order over to the customer for approval to move forward with this repair. Disassembly. Now that we have received a purchase order to approve the repair of this motor from the customer, we will disassemble the motor. First, we will remove the back plate. Second, we will remove the encoder housing and disconnect the wiring. Next, we will remove the end bell and take the encoder down the hall to be repaired on the industrial electronic side. Then we'll clean the motor and dry it. Now we are removing the front end bell. Here we'll disconnect the brake and remove it from the stator. We have to inspect the rotor and the shaft and remove the front bearing. To do this we'll use a bearing puller and then the back bearing housing. As you can see, there is a contamination that must be removed. The bearing is bad, as you can see. It's tight and can cause the motor to overload. Then we will remove the brake, which will need to be cleaned and re-verified after for its functionality. We can see the contamination inside the stator. And We'll remove the contamination. As we clean the brake, you can see all the dirt and contamination. We will get this motor into the alkaline washer to get all cleaned up. We use an alkaline washer to wash most all of our motor parts. It's better than hand cleaning and pressure washing. Now that everything is cleaned, including the stator and the rotor, we are ready to put on new bearings and reassemble. Now that our motor is all cleaned, 
it is ready for new bearings and reassembly. We use high quality bearings that meet or exceed all manufacturer's specifications. First, we will heat the bearing. While we wait on the bearing, we'll put the brake back on. Quick test of the bearing. And now we will place the new bearing onto the motor. Some new seals and we'll reinstall the front end bell. Now we'll replace the back bearing. And now we're putting the rotor back in the stator and reconnecting the brake. Lastly, we'll put the end bell back on, reconnect the encoder wiring, and place the back plate back onto the motor. Final test at the TI-5000 station. Now that our servo motor has been completely cleaned, dried, had the encoder repaired and tested, and new bearings, it's ready for final testing. Before the final cleaning and paint, we'll retest at the Mitchell Electronics TI-5000 station to ensure the encoder is working properly and to verify its alignment for the final test. To verify all revolutions, this motor must pass the count test and we will also perform a memory test to see what angle we need to realign the motor and encoder. This shows us all the information about the motor and that the angle U to V is 199 degrees and U to W is 259 degrees. We'll verify by entering holes and lockup angles. Set the U to V angle to 199 degrees and test. We will repeat this step for the U to W angle. As it runs, we will use a handheld tachometer to measure the RPMs. The reassembled motor has now passed all testing and is ready to paint for paint and dry. This motor is now ready to ship back to the customer repaired and fully tested. It has been a pleasure having you with us throughout the repair of a servo motor. We want to be your number one source for all your industrial equipment needs. <laughs>